more now on Sports Center right now. The Miami Herald reports Jason Taylor, who has collected more sacks than any player in Dolphins history, sixth all time among NFL sack leaders, will play the final game of his 15 year career Sunday. He trails only Bruce Smith, Reggie White, Kevin Green, Chris Dolman, and Michael Strahan on the all time sack list. Alex, we better give JT a big tribute this coming Sunday when they beat the hated Wets. I got a great feeling about this game, and I hope. JT, like I said earlier, can leave off with about five sacks and about six tackles behind the line of scrimmage. December 31st, 2011, my final prediction of this year. Well, one thing I know is true, it's JT's final game tomorrow, and two big Finn fans will be cheering this guy on. I've got his to-do list ready to go. It includes three sacks, a forced fumble, one interception, and of course, beat the hated Jets. My prediction, Dolphins 13, hated Wets 10. JT, have a great one tomorrow. 12, 11, Alex, 2011 wasn't very good for Finn fans, but we start a new year in 2-0-12 right now. Look out, everybody. Here come the Miami Dolphins. It's our year. Uh, turnovers, we can't turn the ball over. Okay, You give them a short field, the way their defense plays, it's going to be a long game. We can't have turnovers. you got to be able to run the ball. You know, They control the line of scrimmage on almost everybody, so if they make you punt too many times, that's going to be a problem. They're going to pin their ears back and make you one-dimensional. We've got to make some plays, you know. When we throw the ball, we're going to have guys that's going to be covered and just got to step up and make plays. You guys have been able to make plays throwing the ball down the field. Matt Moore has been doing a good job of getting the ball down there. Is that something you look at as being a, a big key to today's game? I think in every game we play, including this one, we're going to try to throw the ball down the field when we can. If we get, if we get opportunities, we got to take advantage of them. And no matter who's playing out there, we got guys that can make plays too. And we believe in them, so we're going to throw the ball. Coach, you, you get the chance to close out the season at home in front of the home fans. And uh, it certainly would be great to walk off that field with them having a good feeling and your football team having a good feeling with a big win. It would be great to come out and win the last one, especially at home. We've been playing well at home. You know, we fell short last week, but to come out at home and play the last game, especially Jason Taylor's last game, you want to make this extra special. Well, we still have a long way to go here. They're looking, to, looking forward to the game. We're all looking forward to wishing all of our fans a, uh, a happy and safe New Year. So we're going to try to get this win on New Year's Day. And for all the fans that's followed us all year, happy New Year. May you continue to follow us, and God bless. Coach, wish you the best. Thank you. All right, that's going to do it for another season of The Coach's Show. We will catch you hopefully next year. their arch rival while a Dolphin great calls it a career. Those stories and much more next on Dolphins Weekly Live. You know, after 15 years of doing this and 13 here in Miami, this will be my last game as a Miami Dolphin and as a professional football player. This is, this is the right move to make at the right and this is the right time to do it. It's great to have a chance to walk away and, and do it in front of your home crowd. Um, in a city that means a lot to you, get through the next one, this last one, um, preferably win the game and sail off in the sunset for a while. Are you trying to make me cry? No. <laughs> but it's a moment. Yeah, um, I think I'll be okay with it. I, I, I think, you know, it'll be emotional. Um, it'll be incomplete because I won't have a championship. Um, but other than that, I'll, I think, I feel like I, I did more than I set out to do and, and, I think left a mark, and that's what I always wanted to do. I always wanted to leave a mark. Well, Bo, that was a terrific interview with Jason Taylor. We're joined now by Finsider Sam Madison, a longtime teammate of JT's. And Sam, I have to get... 28 degrees and very windy on this January 1st, 2012. I predict a Dolphin 13 to 10 victory to kick off this 2012 year in JT's final game. Couldn't be a better way to end the season. 
beaten the hated Wets. The Jets, last game of the season here at Sunlight Stadium. You can't, it doesn't matter what, uh, the playoffs for both teams would be great, but it doesn't matter. These guys are going to go at it. Well, the playoff chances for the Jets. That's an awful lot of ifs. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year to you from our entire CBS Sports crew here in Miami. Greg Gumbel, along with my Hall of Fame partner, Dan Deardorff. It has been another tumultuous year for Jets head coach Rex Ryan, and uh, tumult is, is, is a good way to describe it for Rex. Yeah, it really, yeah, Greg. Uh, you know, uh, Big talker, let's not listen to him. I predict 13-10. to 10. Alex? 24-17. Miami Dolphins. This is a divisional game. Miami would love to ruin the Jets' postseason hopes. And for more Home Depot player stats, log on to CBSSports.com. Plenty of obstacles blocking the Jets' path to the postseason today. It all starts with taking on and knocking off their AFC East rivals, the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins and their fans are saying goodbye to one of their own today. Jason Taylor, one of the great pass rushers of all time, will call it a career. He and the Dolphins will look to close it out on a winning note against the New York Jets from Miami here on CBS. Boy, that was cool. That was cool. Between the Jets and the Miami Dolphins, a rich and storied history. It is a beautiful New Year's Day here in South Florida. 78 degree temperatures, almost no wind at all. The man of the hour here in Miami. Play here we go, Alex. This is it. Underway. 2012. Miami they deferred, and Bill McKnight watches that one sail into the end zone for a thousand rushing for this season. Get that one yard, and he is at the 1,000 yard mark. The offensive line has run defense in the NFL. Yeah, and two five. And third and five with Damian Tomlinson in the back yeah. of Sanchez over the middle. Get that away. That's a great start. High five early, all day long. First start for the Dolphins in the 24 6 loss to these Jets back in October. He had three TD passes in last week's three point loss. Lex Hilliard. And probably be ready for anything today. Razzle dazzle. Played, Greg. Stepped into the breach and did it well. He's uh, played very efficiently. Got more than twice as many touchdowns as interceptions. This is Daniel Thomas, the rookie. Gets back to the line. He sets chair number 74. John Jerry starts for him on the left side. And the backs and the receivers and Brandon Marshall with a few fiery remarks this week that only add fuel to this already intense rivalry. Well, like it's not enough fun watching Brandon Marshall retreat. In other words, Wets had a third and five. This is what we do with ours. Nice, nice. That away, DT. High five, too. Money. Nine and a half minutes to play in the first quarter, and the Miami Dolphins draw first blood. Three nothing. Field on third and goal. Sanchez with the ball. Throw. Touchdown. Killer. Doesn't get much. We're coming back to Sunland Stadium right after this. You are watching the NFL on CBS. JT. Oh. Almost had him. Get this drive going. Good start. Good start. Alex Cantine. Steve Slayton. Yes, midfield. Steve Slayton. Yes, he's our man. Third high five of the game. Wow, that's how you run the ball on first down effectively. What a great job. 
Yes. Oh.